Former President Ulushego Obasanjo was in Benin Republic some days ago over the Sunday Igbo Hall debacle, the cable reports. He had traveled to Zanzibar in Tanzania on August 1st and rerouted to the Francophone nation. Obasanjo was said to have met with Benin's president, Patrice Talon, after his consulate visit to Nice, Foreign Salgo on his wife's demise. Rosalind was 87 years old. Soglo was Beninese president from 1991 to 1996 and was one of the African leaders who intervened when the late General Sani Abacha jailed Obasanjo in 1995. Igboho is in trouble in Nigeria and the Benin Republic. While the letter is probing the passport he carried, Nigerian authorities accused him of planning to stage a war against the state. The July 1st Department of State Services DSS operation at his Soka residence Ibadan in Oyo State unearthing assault rifles and ammunition. Two of his allies were killed while others faced trial. On several occasions, Igbuho boasted that he has the capacity to acquire weapons and face security agencies. Ten days after he was declared wanted in Nigeria, Igbuho and his wife Ropo were apprehended at Kajohun Airport in Kotonou. However, Igbo's wife has since been released. This is good news. Uh, it's good to hear that um, the Southwest leaders, they are all working um, towards the release of Sunday Igbo. They are all working hand in hand. You know, earlier on today, we got news that even um, Oni's carcass, Oni's, Oni was meeting with um, Obasanjo, um, Wale Shonika as well, and um, other monarchs in the West. And all of this is regarding the challenges facing the Southwest. They can see the oppression from President Mohammed Buhari's government. Before now, it looks like they were playing politics, but I believe that they are beginning to understand what is going on. Fulani Hetsme are still working freely. Boko Haram, they are still moving freely. Bandits are still carrying out their activities and their operations freely. None of them have been arrested. It's freedom fighters like Sunday Igboho and um, uh, Nam De Kano that um, are their... <laughs> Are, are the people where they feel that um, that is where they want to operate. So um, the news we're getting is that um, Obasanjo um, went to Benin Republic, but he went there for a different uh, purpose. He went to pay a condolence visit. Uh, he had traveled to, to there to pay a condolence visit. It's possible that um, he's gone into talks with uh, the Beninese authorities on how Sunday Book can be released. But what interests me in all of this is that it's very clear right now because of um, the sort of um, persons, the personalities that are really throwing their support behind Sunday Book, it goes a long way to tell us that this man is just a freedom fighter. We know that very clearly that none of those things that uh, President Mohamed Buhari's government have labelled him as. You know, um, it was um, Burutai, Burutai who stated that um, <laughs> Sunday Book was a terrorist. How, how surprising. Well, some persons have um, different views about all of this. Some persons are feeling that uh, uh, Obasanjo cannot be trusted. Someone states here that, please don't trust this man. He's working for Nigerian government and Buhari. Well, we don't know how true that is because um, Oni of Ife um, is planning to meet with um, Obasanjo. Obasanjo has been speaking. He's been lending his voice regarding this agitation, but we know that um, he's never spoken for separation. He's always come from the point that, um, you know, one time he was even pleading with the agitators, um, um, Odudua Nation and Biafra. His position was that, um, or his own argument was that, what will happen to the minority that um, if um, the Southeast goes with IPOB, and the West goes with um, Odudua Nation, the North, they go their way. What will happen to the minority? So for that, that was the reason he brought forth to these um, agitators that um, for that reason, they should consider remaining one, that the country is better united as one, we are stronger as one. But he should not forget um, the injustice that are still going on. We can't continue like this. No way we can't continue like this. It's so unfortunate the way you would know that these northerners they are not ready to change president muhammad buhari is not ready to change this is oppressive style of government is even after the southern governors rose up from their meeting and um, they all uh, uh concluded they resolved that 2023 the uh, the next president should emerge from the south 
So it could be the southeast, southwest again, but from the south, not north. The north, they've, they've remained in power for too long. And if we even look at President Mohamed Buhari's government, is filled with northerners. Northerners, all of the top positions, they are all northerners. All of them, um, look at all of the agencies. Northerners, northerners, northerners. Recently, um, the DCP, Abba Kiari, that was suspended, expectations were like um, Buhari would get a replacement from Another region, it must not be a northern and it must not be a northern and everything northern and even uh, the, the new chief of army staff, northern and name all of them. You know, that was one of the reasons when Sunday Igboho, um did a video, he brought out a video at the point when he stated that enough is enough. He was lamenting seriously that this, this is too much. We can't bear this. What crime did we commit to become Nigerians? What crime did we commit to be born here? That injustice is too much. He started listing that if you check all of the federal agencies, they are all appointees of uh, President Mohamed Buhari and from the north, and also from his uh, 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 religion. That is why they can boldly support terrorism. They can boldly support killer Fulani headsmen. None of these Fulani headsmen have been apprehended. None of them are waiting to face uh, the law for their crimes committed. They are so bold. They are so confident because they know they have a lot of backing while well, some other people um have different opinion you know someone stated that um, obasan just should not be trusted whatever is going to discuss with the benonese government we know benonese government has since voiced out that um, they cannot be compelled to uh, extradite um sunday Igbo, that they are going to follow due process at the stage where president Mohamed Buhari was pressing that like, what should be sent back to nigeria but then his government already um uh um showed that they are not ready to play uh buhari's game they will go through, do the needful. But um, Nigerians were so surprised when they came out with another charge that um, they are charging uh, Sunday Igbo with new charges that um, since um, he reportedly came through the back door, they, they believe that he must have had some activities with some criminals and they are planning to take over the state. Very surprising. This is someone who got to Cotonou and within a couple of hours, less than 24 hours, he was about leaving to Germany. If he came for any uh, any sort of any of such plan, he will not be leaving almost immediately. Well, someone else says, it seems we have a long way to go in Africa. Those in power do things without lay down law and no one to question them except God Almighty. At Obasanjo, thank you, sir, for negotiating for peace. Someone still believes that... Um, <laughs> Uh, um, Obasanjo will not sell his conscience to go there and uh, betray Igbo, Sunday Igbo. That the, the sort of age where we live right now, these people they don't have conscience anymore, they do things anyhow, they can go any length. But, um, appreciations are coming in for what Obasanjo is currently doing to see how um, Sunday Igbo's trial is going and how it can be released. Well, my people, drop us your take down below in the comment section. Thank you once again for staying tuned. And please don't forget to like, share, and to subscribe. So, like, come your way again with more updates. Bye.